You wake up and see three red flaming rocks staring at you. Apparently, you were a little slow in your formation, but you are now also a flaming rock. Your name, Venus, a flaming hot diva of a planet that is formed with the other inner planets around the sun. But while you look very hot right now, so does everyone else, which means that you are not really special at the moment. You notice that the Earth has a moon, and you ask how she got one of those. Do you have to do anything, or is the sun still selling them down at the Walmart? Well, Earth then tells you that her moon formed because they are smashed into her, and then she mentions that you actually had one as well, but no one really knows what happened to it. The sun either stole it with his gravity, or you absorbed it. Great, you've only been alive tens of millions of years, and you've already either been robbed or committed a murder. Sounds like 1980s Manhattan, but in space. Anyway, while you reflect on that horrifying thought, Jupiter the janitor helps clean things up around here with his massive gravity, and you all settle into your places. Except you realize that you're kind of close to the Earth. She's not only in the habitable zone like you, but you're also quite similar. You have 95% Earth's diameter, 82% of her mass, and even your gravity is only slightly less. Wait a second, all those numbers are lower. Who the f is this bitch? It's time to show her who the real queen of the solar system is. But there is only one problem with that. Something is not quite right with you. You notice that while most planets in the solar system spin counterclockwise, you've decided to be different. You know, against your will. You rotate clockwise, backwards, and ridiculously painfully slow. Like the old people trying to count their coins at the checkout. Turns out whatever happened between you and your moon possibly caused this slow rotation to happen. So Jupiter is having fun, Earth is enjoying creating her own powerful core, and you take 243 Earth days to rotate. Yes, that means your year is shorter than your day. And of course the Earth laughs at you for this. Well, go right ahead, but she hasn't realized that she has cooled down at this point, just like the other planets. Which means only one thing, you are now the hottest planet in the solar system. Fine, Earth now has an ocean, which is subjectively beautiful, but researchers claim that you might have had one as well. See, for potentially up to a billion years, you could have maintained your own oceans, which means your atmosphere would have been more Earth-like, with reasonable temperatures and possibly even conditions for primitive life. But here's the thing about that. That's still a theory that has to be proven, and you notice that Earth has a beautiful magnetic field from her liquid metal core and also tectonic plates. You don't have these things. That means you'll always lose any atmosphere that you create, unless you can find another way, but otherwise you're just hot with no aura. You never developed a proper magnetic field. Your slow rotation prevented your core from even being able to create one. And without this protection, you were completely exposed to the sun being a dick to you because you was bored of making fun of Jupiter for a few days. I mean, it's not so bad because he blew Earth's first atmosphere away too, but she can just make a new one. I knew she was fake with all her filler and plastic surgery. I mean, her face does change every few hundred million years. And meanwhile, you are closer to the sun, so you get almost two times more sunlight heating you up. An all natural tan, baby. But this does mean that while Earth gets some life, you will just have permanent melanoma. Huh, why does she always get everything and you don't? You are sick of always being worse than her. You know what, fine. You don't have life, you don't have oceans, your skin is as dry as a raisin, but at least you are the hottest planet in the solar system. But it's just not enough. You need to be even hotter than Sydney Sweeney so that everyone is always looking at you no matter where they might go. Earth might convince everyone she's a natural beauty, but you will steal the show. First up, while your oceans might have been up for debate, you still had some water and been evaporated. This means your volcanic activity that never stopped after you were born will continue to heat you up. You know why, but astronomers back on Earth are still pulling their hair out as to why this happens. A little mystery is always hot. As the next billion years go by, the Earth gains more life, a stronger magnetic field, and honestly, looks fabulous. But not as great as you're about to look. The radiation from the sun has been increasing and increasing, and you truly are becoming hotter than ever. You also decide to do something about your magnetic field. You know what? You're gonna fake it, and no one will ever know. The sun hits your upper atmosphere so hard, it makes the atoms up there swirl into a weak magnetic bubble, a pseudo-magnetosphere. It will delay your atmosphere being blown away long enough for you to accomplish your goals. See, because you lost your water, the carbon dioxide is building up. You have no self-regulating systems, and no one will tell you what to do. The first time carbon dioxide showed up on you, it felt harmless. But then, it triggered a chain reaction, and it's now everywhere like that stupid Dubai chocolate. This is the runaway greenhouse effect which makes the other planets look concerned over your health, but you aren't. You must get hotter. You create some more volcanic eruptions over millions of years, 
which release even more CO2. And it has nowhere to go but into your atmosphere. It's a feedback loop, just like you want. You keep creating more and more heat uncontrollably. And eventually you reach 457 degrees Celsius, hot enough to instantly fry probes, melt lead and zinc, and incinerate the frozen meat that's been in your freezer for over 10 years. No other planet is as hot as you. And not only that, your atmosphere reflects more light than any other planet in the solar system. Be quiet, Enceladus. Yes, that means you are the hottest and the brightest. Take that, Earth. All the humans can look up at you and call you a morning star and an evening star as you brighten their world and give them meaning. Yes, you're such a queen that entire civilizations worship your existence in the night sky. Once again, take that, Earth. They love me more than they love you. Wait, why isn't she impressed? Well, your atmosphere is now so thick no one can see beneath it, and it's then you decide to look in the mirror and you realize you are hideous on the surface. A scorching hot planet filled with only volcanoes and lava. 85,000 volcanoes. And I'm pretty sure Sydney Sweeney doesn't have those. And you don't just erupt, by the way, you warp. Your surface is scarred with what's called coronae, giant molten halos like you try to crown yourself as queen and cracked instead. And you also suffer from tesserae, which are broken tiles of rock smashed together at impossible angles. You're not actually hot. You're a Picasso painting. But fortunately, no one knows just yet because no one can see through your 96.5% carbon dioxide atmosphere where you have sulfuric acid in your clouds. At least that acid doesn't reach your surface, or you'd be even uglier. However, because of this, your atmosphere is the heaviest of all the rock planets. So now you're also overweight? Yeah, you're beginning to feel it. The pressure on your surface builds to 92 times that of Earth's due to that atmospheric weight. This is the equivalent of being crushed under a kilometer of ocean or the heaviest man in the world sitting on your hamster. The pressure and heat is so much that you glow a dull red, which humans can now see through infrared and radar cameras. I guess they did it. They finally discovered how ugly you really are. The other planets pick up on this and are immediately turned off by you. Quick, you have to distract them. Look at my atmosphere at the top. Yes, look how fast it goes. The top of your cloud spins around the entire planet every four Earth days, 60 times faster than you yourself rotate, and they have mysterious ultraviolet stripes. That works for a little while as they marvel at the beautiful colors, but they get bored too quickly. So you try something else. But look, I have lightning. It seems they don't even care that yours comes from acid and not water. It's then you realize that you have become the opposite of what you wanted. Ugly, lonely, and rejected. Is it possible Earth was better all along? Sure, you're slow, rotate the wrong direction, and your core doesn't create magnetic fields, then you look like the inside of a volcano's asshole. But, 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 what if instead you try to become a better Earth? You can fix this. You can be a natural beauty too. Yes, you just need to try a few things. A few hundred years go by, and none come to mind. You spiral into depression. You can never be as beautiful as Earth. It just isn't possible unless some insanely unlikely things occur like being smashed by an asteroid or moving further from the sun, because after 4.5 billion years, you're no longer in the habitable zone. And so you finally accept your fate. But then you hear a noise. Where is it coming from? Wait, from Earth? It seems that Earth has sent humans to terraform you. Why would she do this? You guess that it's apparently because she felt bad for you and that the fight you two apparently had, it had always been one-sided. It was always you being the diva and hating on her and Earth just wanted the best for you. The humans deploy millions of tiny carbon eating machines to suck CO2 out of your atmosphere and slow down your heating. They float, they clean, they live in cloud cities in your atmosphere where the temperature is actually quite comfortable. The pressure up there is the same as on Earth after all. It's like a day at the spa for you and for them. They bring in mirrors to act as blankets to block the sun's radiation. He doesn't like that, but who cares about him anyway? The humans even use bacteria to eat up more CO2 and release oxygen. You try to tell them that you have UV absorbers in your atmosphere that could be microbes and phosphate in your clouds that would be released by them. The humans could then cultivate an entire civilization on you, and now it feels like the humans might actually be close to living on your planet. But then, unfortunately, they realize that those weird UV absorbing particles might just be sulfur compounds. The phosphine turns out it was not the kind made by life and more the kind that's literally rat poison. No life was ever on you. They've now realized it would actually take thousands of years and entire planet-sized factories working 24-7 just to make you even a little bit more like Earth. You then decide to take a look back at Earth. She's dried up and unlivable. 
So she didn't actually care about you. The human stripped her beauty away and then she sent them to do the same thing to you in order to try and save herself. You knew she was fake all along. Speaking of fake, the humans have now left you alone and gone to Mars because apparently him being dead is not a turn off. He has a pitiful atmosphere, no activity at all, and yet they would prefer to terraform him over making you beautiful? Disgusting. So much for being Earth's twin. You sit there and realize everything that happened in this solar system was ultimately just a waiting game. So if you wait long enough, surely your CO2 and sulfuric acid problems will cure themselves, right? But then over time as the sun swells, you suddenly realize something. Why is he so damn hot? Wait a minute. All this time you were trying to be the hottest thing in the solar system, but the sun was just right there looking like a whole snack. He's way hotter than you. In fact, he's getting so hot, it's getting quite overwhelming. Oh 